Ah, oh, what a night, Reese. You are looking live at sold out Williams Bryce Stadium in Columbia, South Carolina. A battle of top 10 SEC heavyweights. Georgia, South Carolina, Southern Fried Football at its finest, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, everybody, with Kirk Herb Street. I'm Brett Musburger. Thanks for dropping by. What a night this figures to be. Already, Florida has upset LSU down in the swamp. And now the SEC, you got to wonder, is the East going to take charge here this year? Well, I think everybody knew when this season started that these two teams, Georgia and South Carolina, were ready to try to push the SEC East up. But Florida has been a pleasant surprise. And with them beating LSU, it makes the significance of this game that much more important because the loser is on the outside looking in at the winner of this game and now the Florida Gators, who appear to be for real. Some great stories tonight. The running backs for Georgia, the freshman. We have Todd Gurley and Keith Marshall. Well, I think everybody has been talking so much about these two backs that, to me, it makes me really look at this team and study the tape and realize that, you know, they have a three-year starting quarterback in Aaron Murray, and when you go on the road, we can talk about these backs, and they're going to have to step up and give them balance. But Aaron Murray's decision-making, his poise, the ups and downs that they'll face tonight, he's the key as far as I'm concerned. And also, how will their offensive line play in this environment? They're not going to be able to hear them it's going to be tough to communicate. The battle up front will be interesting. But when you talk about running backs, the number one back in the country is Marcus Lattimore of South Carolina. Marcus Lattimore, I think, is finally beginning to get healthy. He had an ACL reconstruction with his knee last year. He's about 11 and a half months away from that. I thought last week he really stepped up against Kentucky in the second half. You can see what he's done in his two games in his career against Georgia. He's been a workhorse. South Carolina coaches feel he's ready to go back to being that kind of back. We'll see if he can do it tonight. There are stars all over this field. The NFL is watching closely. The kickoff, Georgia, South Carolina, is next. ESPN College Football Prime Time, presented by Hampton Hotels. You're watching the SEC on ESPN. It's one of the grandest openings in all of college football. Sit back and enjoy, everybody. Here come the game cards. Georgia Bulldogs. Heather Cox is with us down below, so let's go to Heather. Brent, Georgia suffered an untimely injury on Tuesday when receiver Michael Bennett went down with an ACL on the very last day, the very last play in practice. Now, this is significant because Bennett led the team in receptions and is really Aaron Murray's go-to guy on third down. Now, the good news, they do have depth at that position. Marlon Brown and Malcolm Mitchell, who now moves to offense full-time, will get a lot more looks. Now, Bennett went home to be with his family this weekend. He'll have surgery to repair that ACL on Tuesday. And, guys, his spirits are certainly still high he's been texting with coaches and players the last couple of days saying I will be ready for spring everything happens for a reason go beat South Carolina thank you Heather the last two games have been won by South Carolina and they have been good ones 
a year ago the shootout in Athens 45 42 the defensive struggle in 2010 South Carolina won at 17 6 and it bears repeating no time in history has South Carolina ever won three straight years against Georgia tonight they'll go for that mark. Receives. Georgia won the toss and deferred. sends it away the point guard of the basketball team Bruce Ellington touches it for the game pass out of bounds at about the 24 yard line and now the junior from Flowery Branch Georgia played high school football for his daddy here is Connor Shaw and I think that sums it up Brent high school football coach's son and he plays that way he is gritty he is athletic if you spend too much time worrying about Marcus Lattimore he's gonna run the football if you haven't seen Steve Spurrier's offense in a long time this is no longer the fun and gun they're gonna line up they're gonna run the football they have to run the ball to set up the play action let's see if Connor Shaw and Marcus Lattimore can get him going Jarvis Jones and the defense ready Introduction to Marcus Lattimore. Drill down at the 27-yard line. And, Herbie, let's take a look at our Chick-fil-A impact players. And, and you said it in the open. Marcus Lattimore, I, I, I agree. He is the top back in college football. Coming back from the knee surgery, really starting to look like he's close to 100%. The receivers eventually are going to have to get behind the Georgia defense. Damian Bird is that guy. Also look out for some of the other slot receivers, such as Ace Sanders. Different look with the formation. Shaw on second down with plenty of time going deep. Battle for the ball and is complete to Bird. What a catch by Demir Bird, a sophomore from New Jersey. Interesting call by Steve Spurrier. Play action. It holds the linebackers and the safeties, but actually Rambo eyes the ball the whole way, but Bird takes it away from him. Rambo was in position, a ball hawk, but Damian Bird gave him all the credit in the world. He just took the ball away from Rambo, who had eight interceptions a year ago for this Georgia defense. 42-yard gain, moves the ball to the Dogs' third. They show blitz. Lattimore. And he is thrown back at the point of attack. Ogletree was the first to hit him. Ogletree's second game coming back from the suspension. Said they showed blitz, and that's something that George is going to have to do. They know as well as you and I and everybody watching that Marcus Lattimore and Connor Shaw in the running game are the key. Even though Steve Spurrier has an ability to go downfield the way he already did on the second play. So the Georgia defense crowding the line of scrimmage, sending those linebackers and safeties. Jarvis Jones is 29, one of the great defenders in college football. Play action shot. 
Takes off. A very good runner. First down, game pops. Steps out of bounds just across the 20 yard line. And he eyed the receiver off to the left, A. Sanders. Bird also on the slot. You see two defenders take him away. This, if you study film on Connor Shaw, this might be his best play. When receivers are covered downfield, he's not going to check it down. He's going to show you what kind of quickness he has, and he'll find a way to get to the first down marker. He is a real threat when things break down. John Jenkins, 260-pound nose man, down for Georgia. And again, Shaw is going to put it up, fires middle, open, touchdown, South Carolina. And it was Bruce Ellington, the young man who returned the opening kickoff. And Connor Shaw lit up the Georgia secondary. Yates for the extra point, and folks, this has been a bit of an adventure for the Gamecocks, so hang on. Not this time. Perfect. It's about, it's about the way you want to draw it up if you're Steve Spurrier. Five plays, 76 yards, and a touchdown opening series. Football in high definition is presented by Vizio. Electric in Columbia, South Carolina. Take the opening kick and drive it down their rival's throat. George's turn. Malcolm Mitchell is set to return. This kickoff. There is Malcolm. Plays a little both ways, but because of that injury to Bennett, we expect to see him more on offense here tonight. Yates puts the ball on the team. First, 35, 40, to the 49-yard line. A tremendous return. And Brent, on the opening series, a masterful job by Steve Spurrier because of the respect that Georgia has for Matt Lattimore. Watch this play-action fake. And they've done a good job of mixing run with pass. When he goes fake this way, look at the linebackers. Look at the safety. Have to respect that. Now he's going to roll out. Watch how this Georgia defense now responds. Now they got to hurry up and get out here because they think he's trying to get the ball out to the right flat. And there's Ellington that sneaks out and eventually gets over the corner for the touchdown. Outstanding balance. Perfect time to call that. Look at the eyes, the patience there to let it develop. And then eventually, Connor Shaw knows that Ellington breaks free for the touchdown. Five more yards are going to be tacked on against South Carolina. They were offside on that kickoff so that will take the ball into South Carolina territory at the 47 yard line for junior quarterback Aaron Murray from Tampa Florida and he's one of the good ones Todd Gurley the freshman is the Georgia I back a toss to Gurley trying to get to the edge against this defense and does to the 32-yard line. Both Curley and Keith Marshall possess outstanding speed. So Coach is telling us this week that Aaron Murray, in his third year as a starter, has a lot more freedom at the line of scrimmage. He's mechanically a much better quarterback, but he's making faster decisions, and he'll need to be able to provide that leadership tonight on the road. In the round. Mitchell will return the kickoff. And he is met by Holloman, Devontae Holloman, a safety who now lines up at linebacker and sometimes in the nickel and dime will even line up at Mike. Well, both plays they call, they're trying to take advantage of an aggressive South Carolina defense. The first one worked when they got Gurley to the outside. This time, that was just too slow developing this South Carolina defense way, way too instinctive and fast on that play. 
play action. Deflected, free ball, dive, did he get it? Holloman has it. Intercepted on the deflection. Murray turns it over with another interception. Brent, you just talked about Devontae Holloman. He's a former safety. He's actually walked up tight against Arthur Lynch right here. But watch how he tries to come in, and then he notices the ball is tipped. The instincts to be able to locate the football, he came in there, and that's where that background to be in a safety comes in handy. The ball is tipped. 21's eyes went straight up, and he came in and got the interception. Quarles deflected it. Holloman intercepts it. And it's Gamecock football when you come back. ESPN College Football Primetime is presented by Hampton Hotels. Feel the Hamptonality. And in part by Hyundai. Go online and show your loyalty to your school at HyundaiShowYourLoyalty.com. Tailgating is an art form in Columbia, South Carolina. Wow, those babies are big. I didn't know they were that big inside there. Normally, South Carolina and Georgia have met through the years earlier in September. With the SEC expanding by adding Texas A&M and Missouri, the schedule was juggled. And Mark Rick now plays South Carolina a little bit later, and that allowed Steve Spurrier to stick the needle in. We'll show you what we mean in just a moment. No one needles like the old ball coach. Hand off. And a helmet goes down on the play. Aubrey Jones, and now they quote from Mr. Spurrier. I don't know. I sort of always like playing them that second game because you can always count on them having two or three key players suspended. Actually would have had four <laughs> if they could have played them. <laughs> you had that accent down. That was pretty I've good. I've gone through a lot of years with the old ball coach. Man. And when he gets it in, I mean, he just, I'll tell you, he's got one of the sharpest wits that I have ever been around. He just doesn't have a filter. He just says what he thinks. That's what I love about him. Second down and seven. Shaw going to keep it in the air for the old ball coach. Going to go deep and over to everybody. It'll be incomplete. Now, let's take you through some of these off-the-field issues because Herbie mentioned that some players would not have been able to play. The running back was, was long gone last summer. Sanders Cummings was charged with battery. He was suspended for those first two games. Alec Ogletree and Bakari Rambo missed the first four. They're back on the field. So full strength for Mark Rick tonight. But uh, the message was was delivered. Yeah, it was uh, from Steve Spurrier. And I think for Georgia last week, it was really the first time their defense had everybody in full strength back from suspension. Third down and seven coming up. That is over three, by the way, number nine, who you were just looking at. He's a junior. Shaw steps away from the rush. He's got great ability to get that first down. That's what you want from your quarterback. Again, we talked about what Connor Shaw can do when he feels pressure. And look at these, look at these linebackers and safeties. They know what's coming. You have a safety right here in the middle of the field who's free, and Sean Williams. He knows that he's he's looking in the middle. He knows that eventually this quarterback has a chance to make a play. Both he and Christian Robinson trying to catch up with him. But I think they're underestimating the speed of Connor Shaw. Now he comes back with the big fella, and Lattimore, who carried a couple of times on their first drive is nailed by John Jenkins. I think Steve Spurrier is doing an outstanding job right now mixing not just run with pass, but because they are going to be so run-oriented tonight, when they're throwing the ball, they're taking some chances downfield. And a lot of times it's off play action. And it's giving these safeties something to think about, letting them know they're not afraid to stretch the field. And that can open up those running lanes again for Marcus Lattimore. Second down and eight. Drops it off beautifully in the middle. And the running back is a very good receiver. Lattimore. The fact, Brett, he comes into this game as their leading receiver with 16 receptions. And most of them have been like this. 
And if Connor Shaw is not going to take off and run when things are covered downfield, he's looking for number 21. He has soft hands, has an ability to get through linebackers. Any way you can get the ball in his hands, you're going to try to do it. And that time he was ready and picks up the first down. Separate with coverage was deep downfield. It opened it up for an easy check down that time for Shaw. So after the turnover, the Gamecocks are back in Georgia territory. Strong, strong run that time. So hard to bring him down with the first tackler. You've got to bring help. You can see the patience and the vision on this. See how he sees that it's closed, closed down on the right, has the patience and also the strength and power to run through arm tackles. He and we're going to see Todd Gurley for Georgia. If you don't bring your shoulder pads and your hips, you're not going to bring down Marcus Lattimore. And Lattimore returning from a major knee operation, which ended his season last year early. Look at him bolt through to the 30-yard line. Give the offensive line a lot of credit. Georgia's defensive line, they play a 3-4, and they're asking the big guys up front to just do the best you can to consume these blockers, free up the linebackers. On these last couple plays, this offensive line is doing a good enough job of sustaining the blocks at the front that it's freeing them up to get up to the linebackers. And when you can do that, really creates a rhythm in this running game. And again, that's where Steve Spurrier is like a yo-yo. He's not afraid to go to the play action after he starts running the football. Richard freshman Brandon Shell at right tackle. He's holding up. And that one's thrown a little bit late to the tight end Rory Anderson. And he says this one on me. And this could have been real trouble. He was late because he was looking for the big play to Bruce Ellington downfield. The receiver who was a little bit further downfield. And by the time he came back and realized his man was open, as you said, it was late. Roy Anderson has game-breaking ability as a tight end. You get the ball to him in space and he can get upfield. Checking back over to the sideline. Sean Elliott and Steve Spurrier Jr. are the co-offensive coordinators. Because the old ball coach is the man in charge. And here they come second and ten. Fake the dump off. Now he goes to it. And Lattimore is across the 15-yard line to the 14. That's 16 more yards, Herbie. And I think Schultz done enough already in this game with his scrambling that it's making these linebackers be aware of that. Herrera loses his balance, which is a major no-no with a quarterback on the run. And Shaw, who's been a threat already running, gets the linebacker's attention. And there again is Marcus Lattimore. Just kind of says he's like his blanket. He's cl always close by to Connor Shaw. There's a Brandon Shell as a right tackle for Coach Spurrier. T.J. Johnson's the center, and Corey Robinson is your left tackle. He's pick number 53. No more than a yard that time. There was not much of a, of a gap there, and the dogs jumped on that run. John Jenkins is about 365 pounds, a big, big man. You know, Todd McShay and Mel Kuyper have looked at him as one of the top interior defensive linemen. That last play, he looked like he was quick as a cat. He actually got blocked. He got cut and still got up, shed his blocker, and made a big play there for this Georgia defense. Second and 10. Ellington's right to the left. That time goes up over the top. Touchdown, South Carolina! Rory Anderson, the tight end from Powder Springs, Georgia, with a 14-yard TD, and the Bulldogs are reeling early. Georgia defense is lost right now. Their eyes are in the backfield. They're looking at the quarterback. They're looking at Lattimore. They are lost in the play-action passing game. Two wide open wide receivers. And just like that, it's 14-0. And perhaps the biggest game in the history of South Carolina football. They jump all over the dogs.
It's just a wonderful night of college football. Action all over the place. And after us here on ESPN, Washington and Oregon. The Ducks a big favorite. But beware the Huskies. They played very well in dumping Stanford last week. So we shall see. The Oregon running backs led by Kenyon Barner and DeAnthony Thomas. They are so explosive. You're going to enjoy watching the unbeaten Ducks. That'll be coming up after this battle of the unbeatens in the SEC between South Carolina and Georgia. Malcolm Mitchell had a 48 yard return the last time. Remember he's standing just across the goal line awaiting the Yates kickoff. We'll get a second chance and this time from the five. And he is out to the 28. Well, will go back to the touchdown again. Steve Spurrier, he's got two tight ends, Justin Cunningham and Rory Anderson, who are going to cross. When they cross the two tight ends, they're both actually open. But look at the receiver, Ellington, almost provide a pick there against the defensive back, Damian Swan, who was checked up man-to-man -man against Anderson. He couldn't get through the traffic because Bruce Ellington, a point guard, his coach should be proud from basketball. He kind of had an illegal screen there that he got away with, and it eventually provides a touchdown for South Carolina. Yeah, Frank Martin will love that with the Hoops team this far. So here we go. Jadavian Clowney and the gang are down up front. He's number seven. He was pushing the pile, and it's incomplete. Clowney lines up at right defensive end when he gets down. And, folks, he's only a sophomore. But I'm here to tell you, if he stays healthy, <laughs> keeps his head on straight, he's going to play a long time on Sunday afternoon. I mean a long time. We're looking at a great young football player right here. If the NFL likes to look at Calvin Johnson as a receiver, that's what Jadavian Clowney is as a defensive end to college football and eventually going up to the NFL. And H-back keeping a little bit of an eye on him, too. Coming off the block, getting in on the tackle at the end. It is fun to watch number seven. Now, this is where Georgia, you're ranked number five. They're thinking big things this year. They knew coming on the road, they're going to face a tough environment. They're going to face a tough defense. Mark Rick is down 14 to nothing. We're not even through the first quarter. They need an answer, and they need a first down here on third down. Need eight yards. Clowney down. Murray fires it incomplete. And the dogs are forced to punt. Victor Hampton made the play defensively, number 27. Fred, it started with a low snap from David Andrews, and I think that got Aaron Murray a little bit out of sync. Good job of even just getting the ball on a bounce. Got the ball in there to King, but good coverage this time by Victor Hampton. Close enough there where you'd like to think King can make the catch, but Aaron Murray did a marvelous job just to be able to get the football and try to stay in rhythm and unbalanced there to try to throw that football. Ace Sanders is back. Another freshman kicker for the dogs is Colin Barber. He's out of Cartersville, Georgia. And here comes Ace. Bobble that picks it back up. Scampers, 45. 50 breaks free. Still going. Headed for the end zone. Touchdown, South Carolina. see very often and he might have outdone himself there on that 70 yard return for a touchdown wow is he quick the old ball coach is thinking it's a long night sure. well, what a start <laughs> sit back and enjoy folks this is a 70 yarder and South Carolina is sending shock waves through the SEC
to be able to make a play, let alone Arthur Lynch, 6'5", 260 pound tight end, and then the punter, Colin Barber. saying big time players make big plays in big games. So now Aaron Murray who's been around a while and he needs to come on here Herbie. He needs some good things to happen. Well, he, Again we talked about it last series when you start for three years and he's a junior he's got one more year. You've seen everything that this conference has to offer. A lot of ups a lot of downs. And that experience gives Georgia a fighting chance still in this first quarter with 5.18 to go. But they need something to happen. They've got to get into some rhythm and find some continuity. Outside of the first play to Gurley, the end round, they haven't been able to pick up a first down. They need to get a first down and establish an identity and a rhythm. And they need Murray to be able to step up and provide the leadership. Put a tight end on Clowney's side, although the tackle over there has been doing an admirable job. There was movement. So that's on the left side of the line, that was Canarius Gates. And the tight end jumping out. Stop, 72 offense. That's Gates. And so he's under center now, and he's, he's actually using his cadence. When he's in a shotgun, they'll use the leg kick. But when he's under center, he's using a cadence. And he made a little check there. And I think that Gates thought he called for the snap of the ball. But that's, again, the miscommunication when you're on the road in the SEC. Finally spreads out just a little bit on Gates. On first and 15, the swim move, and he's got Gurley. Number seven all over him with the swim move that time. No chance. They've got to keep an H back over there. And Gates, who just jumped, this time to the inside, the quickness. This is the difference, I think, with what we're seeing with Clowney. You talked about a swim move, the technique. Last year, he was a true freshman and just a tremendous athlete. This year, he's put on 20 pounds of muscle. He's using his hands. He has better technique. That was a great example of it right there. They're looking the chops up front. It's second and 17, and Murray's got to snap it quickly, which he does off to Wooten. And Wooten with a big gain across the 30-yard line that time. Ramtavius Wooten, and he's a junior from Bell Glade, Florida, for 15 yards. We check in down below with Heather. Well, guys, before the game, I talked to Georgia offensive coordinator Mike Bobo. His goal tonight, a way to get that tempo and rhythm that Kirk's talking about, and a way to control the crowd noise is don't use the entire play clock. Get to the line early and snap the ball before the crowd can get into it, guys. But they are backed up into the student section, and it looks like this Georgia offense is having trouble communicating in all this noise. Need two here on third down. Caught and goes back to Marlon Brown this time, the senior from Memphis, Tennessee. Let us go to the studio. Reese Davis, what a night, Reese. It is a great night, Brent. Taco Bell Studio Update. This is Texas, West Virginia. A fourth down and four play in a 7-7 game. Geno Smith, it's Tavon Austin. It's for the touchdown. The odd thing about this, they played fourth and four before that. Texas had sacked Geno, but somebody called timeout on the sideline. Wow, what a passing attack. Keith Marshall is now the Georgia running back. Number four, the other freshman. And Gerardo brings him down that time. Uh, not much doing on that. Byron Gerardo from Green Pond, South Carolina. For Gerardo. For 320 pounder, quick is a cat lined up right here. Watch how quick he is in chasing this down. Marshall has tremendous speed, but look at the big guy. Talk about the difference in the SEC, the defensive line. I thought it was interesting. Devin Taylor telling us yesterday, he's been around a long time. He said, even with the loss of Melvin Ingram, this is the deepest and the fastest defensive line South Carolina's had in years. Marshall to the teeth of that defense. Jack Wilson is there. It's and the freshmen now are finding out what it's like to go into the teeth of an SEC defense. You see four men up here listed, but they'll play eight to ten. And Clowney and Taylor get most of the recognition. But you will see a lot of bodies. And I'll tell you, a guy, Chaz Sutton, number 90, another guy who has three sacks on the year and also has great quickness. So Georgia wanted to avoid these third and long situations. Georgia calling a timeout. Timeout, Georgia. The 
first time out of the half. It'll be a 30 second timeout. You know, Herbie, we uh, caught a glimpse of Mark Rick as we were coming up here to the booth for a little bit of a chat. And, and the one thing I've always thought about Coach Rick, and I think it goes over to his players, is the calmness he demonstrates on the sideline. Yeah. Now, he's in deep trouble. He's on the road. Yeah. This place is a madhouse. He's down three touchdowns. But there's there's always a calmness with him over there, and I, I think the players pick up on that. I, I think you're right, and and I think they they knew about this all week, and they said that the word of the week is poise. They felt that they have a veteran team in, in some key areas, especially a quarterback. They knew that they're going to have some moments where things could get out of hand. I don't know if they anticipated this, but when you go through a week anticipating this, and you have a quarterback like Aaron Murray, you're a touchdown away from thinking, there we go. We weathered the storm. Now we, our defense is ready to get them in some bad field position. Now let's take the crowd out of the game. But it's got to start. Hey, they got a first down, but they got to put a drive together and get into South Carolina territory. One of the things with Michael Bennett out, Murray is searching for some dependable receivers that he can go to. Going deep downfield, incomplete. And he overthrew Malcolm Mitchell, the sophomore from Valdosta, Georgia. They have man to man. South Carolina will play a ton of man. And you talked about trying to find somebody to pick up for the loss of Bennett. Malcolm Mitchell moves over permanently now to offense. He was playing some corner. Matched up that time with Hampton, who's in it, probably their best cover guy. And there's the pressure again. Clowney and company getting in there. There's Chaz Sutton as well. So Ace Sanders, who took 170 yards for a touchdown, is back again in Barber Punny. Fair catch is the signal at the 15-yard line. Well, we'll take a look at how South Carolina is finding success tonight. Brought to you by Expedia. Every way imaginable. Over the top to Ellington. Keeping it airborne to the tight end. And then, Herbie, the great punt return. Expedia is, is the perfect uh, the term here because it's been a lot of speed with what we've seen and how quickly it has happened with not just, of course, the plays by the offense, but the defense is playing well, the special teams play. So there are the big plays that they have had in this game so far tonight. And as far as big plays are concerned for Georgia, it's a goose egg. And the dogs have helped the cause by throwing one interception and not being able to defend Ace on that 70-yard punt return. So it's first down and 10 now for Connor Shaw and a well-rested Marcus Lattimore. And this Georgia defense stacked to the offensive left. Let's see if they try to run right. They're going to run right into it. Let's check in down below with Heather. Georgia's defensive coordinator, Todd, Gra Todd Grantham, just totaled the entire defense, spent time with the grease board, making adjustments against South Carolina's play action. He finished with telling them, stop letting, us, letting them push us around. There's lots of teaching on the fly and what looks to be like a lot of adjustments on this Georgia defense little shield there to cut down on the messaging viewing as the play comes out to the defense. And Shaw is back in the gun. And Gilchrist, the fullback, is right alongside him, and it's a quarterback draw all the way. Breaks free! And to the 34-yard line, that was a huge call, and Ogletree makes the stop, but it's a 15-yard run. Uh, they brought a blitz from here, Herrera, and they also brought it from the outside. Perfect time to call this because he steps right up away from the blitz, follows the blocks, and again, the quickness to that second and third level. Just an interesting comment from Heather Cox about what George is trying to do with Todd Grantham about, hey, don't let him push, push us around. The problem is this South Carolina offense has been so balanced. Georgia right now defensively is guessing at what's coming next. Keeps it on the read option. He took it back from Lattimore. The dogs thought 21 was coming at him. And Shaw picks up another first down, 13 yards. Rambo makes the stop, and Shaw yeah. now has run for almost 50 yards. Again, here he is. Because he's running because of Lattimore, Jarvis Jones that time is the read. They didn't even block the All-American. They just decided to read him. He closed down on Lattimore. 
And you see Connor Shaw pulls it out. Again, this defense right now, they don't know if it's up or down or left or right. From the 46 this time, it will be the hammer. And back to the line of scrimmage. Yep. Todd Grantham's kind of sticking to his guns. He continues to blitz. This time it was Swan. That is the end of the first quarter. A 21-point explosion by the Gamecocks. And Cocky is enjoying every one of those points. State Capitol of South Carolina and our aerial coverage of Columbia is being provided by the MetLife Blimp. See how MetLife can provide the coverage you need. MetLife, I can do this. And right now, South Carolina is doing it all. They've got the ball to start the second quarter, up by three touchdowns. They're coming out from their own 46-yard line. And Connor Shaw is causing the Georgia defense all kinds of problems with his feet as well as his arm. And he's going to throw to start the second quarter. Dropped. That ball should have been caught by Anderson. Again, Anderson is essentially a receiver lined up at tight end at 6'5", 218 pounds. He reminds me a lot of Jared Cook, who is a tight end here, who now plays up in the NFL for the Tennessee Titans. A very athletic, explosive man. The chance to make big plays every time he gets his hands on the ball. That time, the sophomore peeking up to try to see who was closing in on him before he secured the football. So now the Georgia D has got South Carolina in third and long. And stop here to get the ball back. Jet sweep fake. Shaw on the run. Going to keep it and not get the first down. And he takes a blow from Ogletree. How do you do? Uh, they are in man-to-man -man coverage. And Christian Robinson, the linebacker, this time is spying Connor Shaw and waiting for the potential scramble. And he did take a big hit. But see Robinson right here. Right in the middle. He's going to try to stay up with him. He's unable to stay up with him. And eventually, it's Ogletree came very close to a late hit. But I don't think it was, Herbie. I think he got him in yeah, bounds. Yeah, right in bounds. Very close. I think close. it was perfectly legal. Yep. What a shock. Steve Spurrier going for it here on fourth down. <laughs> and Thompson is in in place of Shaw. Dylan, and they're going to call a timeout. So the surprise is First spoiled. Time. And Spurrier says, why did we burn the time out? We had those fellas. <laughs> we'll be right back. Georgia in the second quarter as we continue Dr. Pepper's road to the championships. Steve Spurrier fired up there at the end because he got what he wanted. He brings his backup quarterback in, and Georgia's late to react. Look at this. They're trying to get guys on and off the field. Like South Carolina snaps the ball right there. There's 12, 13 defenders from Georgia. It's fourth and two. It's an easy first down. And I think that's what got the head ball coach so fired up. He had that first down in his sights. So now Shaw comes out for this fourth down. South Carolina two for seven on fourth down. Lattimore is the running back. They are at the Georgia 45-yard line. Spurrier shaking his head. Pedal back then. Now I believe the punt team is coming on. I see Tyler Hull come off the sideline, and Steve has thought better of it. So far. <laughs> <laughs> Up 21-0. Yeah, it's the, it's ball the right coach. call, but you just never we, know. We'd play a little field position yeah, here. You would think. McGowan is back again to return. Oh, hands it. Beautiful. 
the air. Third catch inside the 10 at the 9-yard line. Let's go back now to Reese Davis in the studio. Reese. All right, Brent, time for an Internet Explorer. Quick highlight and quick is how West Virginia is scoring. Andrew Bowie going in on third and goal. 21-7. They have the lead on Texas down in Austin. So a scoring machine from Morgantown, West Virginia. That's slowing down for anybody right now. Next week, of course, the Red River rivalry in Dallas matching Texas and Oklahoma. The Sooners exploding on Texas Tech today. A lot of folks thought that was going to be much closer than it wound up. Now, Holloman is back on the field defensively for South Carolina. He was shaken up a little bit. And Marshall is the running back. They flare him and nothing doing as he's tracked down by Swearinger. Lorenzo Ward, the defensive coordinator from South Carolina, right now has a lot of confidence in the way the battle at the line of scrimmage is going. He knows that his front four has an athletic ability. He knows what they can do as far as pinning their ears back. You look at the total yards right now, Georgia, here we are into the second quarter. They have 40 yards of offense, and now they're back deep in their own territory. He's a Bama man, coached at Virginia Tech, and he's a good one. Murray trying to get this personnel squared away. Look at Clowney. Hit on the release. Incomplete, but there's a penalty flag. There's contact downfield. I think you saw that. But Clowney was about to bury Murray as he got no. into him. How about before he gets to Murray, Brent? He goes around. Poor Gates, the left tackle. And then he hurdles the freshman. The freshman tries to go low on him. He closes in on Murray. But he actually went up and over Keith Marshall. Pass interference. Defense number three. 15 yard penalty. Automatic first down. That's Augusti. Akeem Augusti, a senior from Hollywood, Florida. He's battled some injuries and seems to be okay. And he was guilty on that play. I think the South Carolina fan base and coaches saying that the ball was not catchable. And I think the reason it wasn't catchable is because Augusty took him away completely from having a chance to get to the football. Here comes a linebacker blitz. Filling the gaps and making it tough on Marshall. And they're bringing the linebackers on certain formations. There are certain formations that Georgia has where they're tipping their hand a bit with their run game. And I think these linebackers, when they see a certain look they're they're coming after him they're bringing a blitz and they're getting that defensive line where they're shooting gaps Murray is only three of seven with an interception today Clowney's got him he sacks him the running back ran right by him and I thought the back was going to chip on that play oh, Brent, as he beat the tackle Brent watch the chip this is a true freshman He's going to learn eventually that you cannot do this. He's going to help Gates. Gates has no chance to block Clowney. Absolutely no chance to be able to slow him down. The freshman, he kind of olays him with his right shoulder. They're going to have to put a tight end or a back on him every single time he's lined up. This guy is shades of Bruce Smith, folks. This guy is a big-time defensive lineman. Wow, what a performer. And if I'm Canarius Gates, there's nothing against him. He's a, a, a left tackle. He played last year. He's an experienced guy. But he's got to be going over to Mike Bobo and saying, Coach, you know, I've got confidence, but you got to help me out, especially on those longer pass plays where Murray's holding on to the football. Ray Sanders, who has returned one for a touchdown in the first quarter, back again, and freshman Barber. Will punt it away. Fair catch is the signal by Sanders at the 40 yard line. And that's for Connor Shaw. Marcus Lattimore will put it in play. What a defensive performer number seven is. ESPN College Football Primetime is presented by Hampton Hotels. Feel the Hamptonality. 
and in part by Lexus, introducing a stunning work of technology, the entirely new Lexus ES. The South Carolina baseball team, back-to-back -back national championships in the new $35 million plus baseball facility opening up. Chad Holbrook is the new head coach, Ray Tanner, coach of the championship, and he's now the athletic director. As you look down, and we want to thank the athletic director for leaving the lights on so you could take a look at one of the best little stadiums in all of America right here in South Carolina. I, I live in Nashville where of course Vanderbilt is and they have an outstanding program and the SEC in my opinion the kings of college baseball and really right here you have to start with the Columbia or with the South Carolina Gamecocks. Kenny Miles is now in as the back couldn't get open as a safety valve and Connor Shaw is going to be sacked back on the 31 and we're going to go to Reese for an update. Reese. Brent, just want to put your finger on the prime time pulse. Nebraska and Ohio State have just started on ABC. On ESPN2, Florida State and North Carolina State just underway. About five minutes in, still scoreless. And on ESPNU, Ole Miss giving Texas A&M a fight. It's 10-10 as they play in the second quarter. Reese, thank you very much. And, uh, folks, you've got to look at a real good linebacker just a moment ago. Jarvis Jones will be making that stop for Georgia. Uh, he's that bold ball coach a little bit upset time. over there. Up 21. The visor's still in play. <laughs> <laughs> and here comes Miles, who checked in, remember. So he gets his first carry. He's out of Lawrenceville, Georgia. Herrera, 52, is kind of jogging in here late. You can see some confusion. By the time he gets ready, he's trying to get the call. A lot of confusion that time with the substitution of personnel groupings from South Carolina. I don't even think Georgia, again, it continues with the miscommunication about trying to get lined up and get ready to go. Miles, the senior, stays out next to Shaw. Takes off again. Scrambles up the middle before Jones makes another stop on the quarterback. When it's third down, if you can get Connor Shaw to third down and you're Georgia, and they've been spying with Christian Robinson, a linebacker. And a lot of times we've seen Connor Shaw run away from him. They might want to think about putting a safety in that position because more often than not on third down, if his primary receiver is not there, he's pulling it down and taking off. Rhett McGowan is now back deep for Georgia. And he makes the fair catch at the 19-yard line. Andy Murray and the Dogs trying to get something going before the intermission. Today, you'll see two of the top running backs in the country, George Rogers, South Carolina, and Herschel Walker, Georgia. And they run a crack with Herschel Walker. Got a hole by 35, 40, 35, 50. There goes Herschel. There goes Herschel. Man, did he turn it on when he had to. The golden years for Georgia. And the two Heisman Trophy winners from these two schools, Herschel, of course. George Rogers is here at the game. He never misses. Lives here in Columbia. Came up with him in the elevator. Still got that big smile on his face like he always had. Really. Now Gurley is back for the dog. Play action Murray. Rolling and coming in underneath. Going to the fullback Merritt Hall. He's a red shirt freshman. You know, we talked so much about Gurley and Keith Marshall coming into this game, and they've gotten so much attention. They have been shut down up to this point. Gurley had one good run early. Now picks his way. Marshall has found nothing going. Augusti makes the stop. I, I like the tempo here by Mike Bobo. I mean, nothing seems to be going right. You got to get South Carolina on their heels somehow. And a lot of times when you go tempo, that can help you. Heather talked about it earlier, not letting the crowd get as much involved with a quick snap back up to the line. Gurley is upended at the 33, and I do mean upended that time. Quinn Smith gets him. Gurley and Marshall. Again, it's early. We got a lot of football to be played, but so far, not having a chance to do much at all. And Lattimore, eventually, he'll get his opportunities, too. I remember Lattimore has been using the receiver also by South Carolina, and that flare outside to Marlon Brown is dropped. 
I, I really felt coming in to tonight's game. We were going to find out about Georgia. I mean, here, here's a team in an era where we see a lot of points when we watch college football. Georgia was averaging 536 yards of offense, number one in the SEC, 48 points a game, which was eighth in the country. They've had balance coming into tonight. Tonight, because they're losing the battle at the line of scrimmage, they don't have the threat of pass or run, and it's making it easy for South Carolina to just tee off on this offensive line and Aaron Murray. Third and ten. Pocket holds, fires complete. And that time, it's Tavares King making his first catch of the night. Brent, here's one way to take away Clowney. You've got the big tight end, Lynch. you got the left tackle, and let's throw in the left guard, Dallas Lee. If that's what it takes to give us a chance to throw, that's what we'll do. And King gets behind the aggressive linebackers. The ball out close to midfield and incomplete. I think that was a forward pass and not a lateral. Wooten was the target. You brought up Bruce Smith, and I'm sure you did a bunch of games with Lawrence Taylor. You ever see three guys have to try to block Bruce Smith or... <laughs> or Lawrence Taylor? Well, I saw the San Francisco Giants negate Lawrence Taylor once with a with a guard pulling from the offside to come over and right. double team. Right. Bill Walsh designed that. Oh. And he tried to jump the snap count that time. And he just couldn't quite <laughs> regain it and stay onside. That'll happen to the great rushman every now and again. He's trying to guess there a little Prior bit. Part of the snap, offsides, seven defense, five yard penalty, still second down. It's a good job of mixing things up by Murray, but watch, he, he jumps, then he's caught. Now it's a tightrope. Oh. But a good job of snapping that ball by David Andrews to get the free five yards. And Georgia moves into South Carolina territory. Second down and five for the dogs. Hall stays in as the fullback. Here's the toss with Gurley on the cut. And he's short of the first down. Georgia, for the first time the entire game, started to sustain some blocks up front. Look at it at the top, number 88, Lynch. Locks up there with a big defensive tackle and puts him on his back. And it is a long two. Carolina rushing five, snaps it off complete to the 31 yard line. Mitchell and Malcolm Mitchell. Kept the drive alive with this play. Good job here on third down. They brought a little pressure from the outside. And Murray, who all year has been doing a good job of getting the ball out of his hands. And how about Mitchell? A chance to go up against soft coverage. Seven minutes to go, and it's going to be second and long. It's a tough night at the office for these two freshman running backs. And this time, South Carolina doesn't even have a chance to get lined up. I think, I think Georgia was in such a, a hurry, and they've gone tempo here, and it's worked for them. Sustaining a drive, moving the ball into South Carolina territory. That time, they might have moved actually a little bit too quick. The right guard, Chris Burnett, is out because he lost his helmet. You can see what a difference it makes when you're up against a defensive front like South Carolina's. Curley on the read, and it's third and a bunch. Now, we, we talked about Burnett having to come out of a play. Well, by him having to come out, you see 79 Beard come in at left tackle. So they move their starting left tackle, Gates, who's been struggling against Clowney, over to right guard there. Third down and 10. And a terrific catch by Malcolm Mitchell. It's first and goal for Georgia here with 5.53 to go in the half. What a fine play by 2-6. Holloman, 21, came on the blitz, got in there free. Murray had to get rid of the ball, intentionally throws the ball behind Mitchell to allow Mitchell to find the football and come back. Victor Hampton 
was never in phase with the receiver, could not get his eyes back to locate the football. Burley into the middle. It'll be second and goal from about the two yard line. Gurley appears to be just a touch more effective, doesn't he, behind the center and the guards oh, yeah. into the teeth of that defense than Marshall. I think both of these young backs have some power, but I, I would definitely tend to think that Gurley is more the, the downhill type of runner. And he's off to Murray's left. And he's got it on the read, and Clowney was pulling him down from behind. It'll be third and goal from the one. Number seven having a huge night. Yeah, Murray's athletic enough to come back to this and pull it out and try to get to the outside. This South Carolina defense right now, they're thinking about one guy, and that's Gurley, the big power back. Aaron Murray's background from Tampa Plant High School, he's an athletic guy, a dual guy coming into Georgia. He's become more of a pocket passer, but has athletic ability if they need it. Sometimes a great defensive lineman, you can run right at him. It is third down and goal. Man coverage on the outside. Looking to throw. And Hampton was there defensively. A very dangerous throw by Aaron Murray. And Hampton was on the receiver. And give Hampton credit for anticipating that, that outside kind of the back shoulder fade. It's the play that they just had success moving down into territory. That's a great look there by our guys to show Victor Hampton anticipating that and getting a hand on it to knock it away. Down three touchdowns. They're going to go for it on fourth and goal. Murray didn't get it. South Carolina takes over on downs after the goal line stand. Swearinger was all over the receiver. What a job here by Swearinger, Brent. Man to man on the outside. They tried to set up a rub route, kind of a pick, and the South Carolina defense did not let him get to the goal line. I'm Reese Davis coming up on the Buick Halftime Report. We'll show you how the Gators gutted LSU and they're back. The Huskers and Buckeyes are doing business in Texas starting to get after Geno Smith. I'll get Dr. Lou out of the stylish cardigan in just a moment and we'll do halftime. As we look forward to that and here South Carolina leading Georgia 21 nothing. The dogs just drove 80 yards in 15 plays and Herbie they came up empty. You cannot say enough about the job Lorenzo Ward the defensive coordinator for South Carolina and his group of defenders and what they did there on that fourth down. So now Connor Shaw. And this is danger territory coming out. Lattimore is back in as a running back, and he'll get that first call, and he did just get that ball across the goal line. That was very close, second and long. Talk about continuity on defense. Gurley, the freshman, is going to motion out. When he motions out, watch the communication from South Carolina. Watch how you have Holloman checking in. He's trying to run out motion. Now he's now he continues to talk here, and they're trying to set up an inside route. Without that communication, from the, the uh, safety uh, safety who's turned linebacker, Devontae Holloman, Shaq Wilson was involved in that, and Swearinger, really good job of recognizing the route and staying disciplined there on that fourth down. Now Connor Shaw in the Gamecock offense coming again with Lattimore, having a lot of difficulty finding daylight. Garrison Smith, one of the Georgia defenders right there, and they're trying to keep him backed up against a goalpost. Well, the big fellas up front for Georgia getting a good push. And pushing that offensive line back into the end zone. Now, does the old ball coach decide to put it up in this situation? You're facing a third down and ten. You'd have to throw it out of your own end zone now. It's a very tight formation. There's the play action. He is going to throw out of it. 
Going to go down the far sideline and throw it away, basically. And it is three and out. And now they're forced to punt. And Georgia will have another golden opportunity here. Steve Spurrier probably looking at Connor Shaw and saying, I know I said to throw it away, but be careful. If he threw that too high, he wasn't outside of the tackle box area. When you're in the end zone, it could be a safety. So sets up a, an opportunity here for Georgia to get outstanding field position before the half. Rhett McGowan standing back at the Gamecocks 44 yard line. So here is punter Tyler Hall, Mount Airy, North Carolina. Fair catch at the 46. Okay, Herbie. Here we go. Time for tonight's Aflac trivia question. Here we go now. Who are the three oldest current head coaches in the FBS? I got two, I think. I think you might have two. Can I? Uh, you so got to go little, with Frank Beamer. I'm going to give you a little chance to think. Oh, okay. I'm going to give you a little chance to think. How about Mike Price? Is he in the board? He's not in the board either, huh? Uh, Swing no. and a miss. <laughs> Herbie, you're, you're better than that. Keep picking after this play, unless the dogs strike pay dirt here with Aaron Murray. Well, Spurrier's got to be one of them. Now, that would be the reason why we asked. Well, of okay. course. Look at that. <laughs> Murray going downfield. Got a man open. Juggle incomplete. Wooten couldn't hang on. Ontavius Wooten, the junior, really good job of being able to go right by Jimmy Legree. Got behind him. The ball's a little bit late, and it allows Legree to catch up with it and knock the football away. Late throw by Murray, something we've not seen from him most of this year. But tonight, because he's a bit out of rhythm, under throws the ball and throws it late, and Legree makes the play. Now it'll be Gurley on the run. All right, Herbie, have you decided on your coaches besides Spurrier? Uh, I, I, I've got Spurrier. The All other right. two just Here no we shot. go. Here we go. You'll know him. Bill Snyder yeah. is going to oh, be 73 years old tomorrow. Frank Solich. Frank Solich at Ohio and Coach Spurrier here. Now, here's what's interesting. All three are unbeaten. A combined 16-0. Let's hear it for the old guy. As Lee Corso says, AARP. <laughs> Outstanding. <laughs> Bill Snyder's team looking really good. Oh, didn't they look great? Great win. Murray stands tall, incomplete, and he overthrew Marlon Brown. He has not been on target. You know, all year, looking at him throw, he just looked like a different guy mechanically. He, he's had a chance to be able to step through his throws. His, his fundamentals of getting back and having confidence in his wide receivers has been there. And right now, because of what he has faced in this first half, the amount of pressure he has faced in the first half, he's not been able to get into sync at all. So the dogs will punt it away with Barber again. Jay Sanders signals fair catch and catches it at 16. And so Monday night football and the undefeated Houston Texans. Everybody want to take a look at this team. They're on a roll and. Uh, and it's going to be a tough night for the New York Jets. They got to get back on track, and now they're getting beat up. They've lost receivers, defensive back. That could be a hard night in the office. Maybe that Jet crowd will energize them, but I'll tell you, the Texans, Herbie, you talked about one of the linebackers for Houston. Well, they, they have been outstanding, and, you know, you, this, this defense has been what you kind of anticipated, and Brian Cushing stepped in from SC and into the NFL, having a, a great career, but that team is very aggressive, and the Jets, it's not just... What's going on with the Jets? You have the whole soap opera about Tim Tebow and whether or not he's going to play in this game. Very, very predictable situation for the New York Jets. Now, Shaw and Latimore go to work here on the closing oh, minute and a half. Herrera with the stop for Georgia. So, South Carolina, if you just joined us, they stunned Georgia in the first quarter for 21 points. Then a goal line stand kept the dogs off the scoreboard. And now they're going to take this huge lead if they hang on to the ball here into the locker room. Not only that, they miss the opportunity to get points, and then they have great field position on their next possession, and they go three and out. So two wasted opportunities by Georgia before the half. 
And this is the beginning of a brutal stretch for South Carolina. I call this the Gamecock gauntlet that they're starting on here tonight. Now, after tonight, they go to Baton Rouge, and the Tigers are going to be an angry group after losing at Florida. And then, two weeks from today, they are down in Gainesville. They are going to be playing Florida. So this is the toughest schedule of the year, and arguably one of the toughest that any team in the SEC has to play. So the old ball coach has to keep things together. Now, Mark Rick was shut out at halftime back in 2008 by Alabama. That's a long what, what, time. What makes this more remarkable is this is an offense that was averaging 48 points a game coming in. All we talked about is it's different this year with Georgia because they can run the ball now. They, they have a threat in the backfield. They have a three-year starting quarterback, three new starters on the offensive line. We wondered if if they would be able to maintain this and it's a one half of football who knows what will happen in the second half but you got to give South Carolina's defense the preparation Lorenzo Ward has done a masterful job in the way they have attacked with Clowney and it's not just Clowney the entire defense is dialed in tonight you know when we walked on the field for practice here at South Carolina I'm going to tell you the most impressive group of athletes I've seen other than Alabama is South Carolina yep. the kids were in shape they paid attention during practice. It was upbeat. The old ball coach had the quarterback and receivers down at one end like he used to do at Florida. It's impressive in here right now. That was done. probably the thing that people would find most interesting is at his age and the fact he's coached so long, he's down not just with the quarterbacks, but he's still showing the receivers how to run routes, where to make your break, where Absolutely. to anticipate the football still doing it and still loving every aspect of coaching the X's and O's of it. exactly he's hands-on no doubt didn't no. stand off the side doing any PR no, work no, no. with us he's, out, he's there. out there right now yeah. working it through with the with the quarterback and the, and, and the receivers and he's enjoying every minute of it he's a big-time competitor a fine golfer and kind of puts the clubs away most of the time during the uh, during the college football season, and he's going to take this huge lead into the locker room. And don't go anywhere, because if there's nobody more entertaining than a walk-off <laughs> interview with our Heather Cox and Steve Spurrier. <laughs> <laughs> and for Mark Rick, it was a long first half here in Columbia. Let's go down now to Heather. Coach, Georgia comes into this game averaging 48 points per game. How has your defense been able to stymie that production? Well, we're stopping the run. They've hit a few passes, but they didn't hit any on the goal line. Uh, but offensively, we, we sort of pooped around that second quarter. We need to do a lot better. What type of tweaks will we see in the second half on offense? Well, we're going to run Marcus and try to hit some passes. All right, Coach, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> He's the best. There's the run. He leads 21 nothing over Georgia at the half. Now let's go to Reese Davis in the studio for the Buick Halftime Report. Take it away, Reese. Thank you, Mr. McGraw, and you're watching the SEC on ESPN. 21 nothing now. Brent Musburger with Kirk Herbstreit. And uh, Herbie, let's talk about Georgia. Can they climb back in this? Can they get something going, turn things around here? The thing that they did towards the end of the first half is they went tempo. And, and I, I got to believe, not just because they're, they're racing against the clock here down 21, but because it, it took the crowd out of the game a little bit, and it, and it also allowed them to get a little bit of a rhythm going. Mike Bobo's got to go back to the tempo and try to see if they can make a big play. You know, they came into this game averaging eight plays of 20 yards or more. They're a big play offense. Tonight they have one. So if they don't do any better up front, it's, it's going it's to be a long second half. They've got to Check your headset. You said took the crowd out of the game. <laughs> <laughs> this crowd has been electric all night. One of the best we've seen, Herbie, all season long. The dogs will get the first crack at it, so settle in. Here we come with the second half kickoff. to the 25 as we take a look at tonight's good hands plays brought to you by Allstate and Herbie it has been the Gamecocks who've had the good hands well they have this is on a tip pass earlier in this game by Kelsey Quarles the recognition which was really impressive by Devontae Holloman 
Then later, th this was an outstanding play. Jimmy Legree, ball underthrown, thrown a little bit late. He catches up with it and knocks it away from Rontavius Wooten. Big drive here. I know it's early here in the second half, but Georgia's got to, again, establish something and get their confidence established here early in the second half. Gurley will open as the running back. Gets the first carry, and he is brought down after a nine-yard run by Wilson. Nice push up front that time. And you can see Dallas Lee pulling from the backside to open that up. Here comes the tempo again by Murray. Oh, that could have been a pick six. Holloman read it beautifully. He would have walked in if he'd have hung on to it. You know, Clowney and Devin Taylor get most of the recognition for this defense, but Devontae Holloman is a senior. This guy has been instinctive the entire night. A safety who's moved to linebacker is all over the field. And on third and one, penalty flags, I believe. Hold on now. Let me check that. I'm not so sure now. There was a juggle of the ball, but there's no penalty flag on this. Lorenzo Ward, the defensive coordinator from South Carolina, told us their, their spur linebacker has to be the most versatile. Ability to cover in space, a blitzer. He's got to be able to be physical and athletic. He's got that in Devontae Holloman. Finally was coming again. And it's complete, but for a loss, Wooten is the receiver. We check in down below with Heather. Brent, I was able to talk to Mark Richt and ask him about changes that he wants to make on offense. And he said, we must do a better job creating more space for our young backs so that they can create. We've also got to stop that penetration. And when we have that protection, we must hit that open target. Now, Richt was very optimistic. He said, yeah, we're down 21 nothing, but we've got some momentum. We have. We held South Carolina the last few series by turning Connor Shaw into a quarterback and not a runner. They want to keep him in the pocket the second half. Second and 16, incomplete over Hall's head with that pass. And so this first series is not working out too well for the Dogs. Well, they are continuing to either bring pressure or show pressure and back out. It's a cat and mouse game between South Carolina's defensive line and linebackers and even safeties and Mark Rick's offensive line trying to create confusion and hesitation and trying to rattle Aaron Murray. Third down, pressure coming. They hit him again. And this time it was from the other side. It wasn't Clowney, but Devin Taylor, number 98, the senior from Buford. They had a stunt up front with Aldrich Fordham to the inside. He tries to come around here, but it's Taylor's speed off the edge that eventually gets there. This play takes a while to develop. You can see Fordham broke free through the middle off of the stunt up front. And there's a true freshman trying to hold on there, and that football almost came out before his hand was coming forward. Almost a turnover there for South Carolina. So Barber punting for Georgia, and Ace Sanders from Bradenton, Florida, is back deep. And if you just joined us, he had a 70-yard return for a touchdown in the opening quarter. He signals for a fair catch. And Boy, that's what you want your punt return men to do. Be sure-handed and at least catch that football. College football in high definition is presented by Vizio. Six straight years, the SEC has won the Coaches Trophy, presented by Dr. Pepper, and South Carolina would dearly love to get in on the fun. This is the start of their three-week gauntlet. Next week, Baton Rouge to take on LSU. Two weeks from now, to Gainesville to play a very improved Florida team. First things first, Connor Shaw, Marcus Lattimore will come out here to open the second half with their first series. T.J. Johnson, the senior center, will snap it to Shaw. And that's Lattimore moving over to the quarterback's left. Lattimore 
throwing for a loss. Ogletree makes the stop. I think Steve Spurrier's got to continue with what he did in the first half by just mixing it up. The line doing a good job of giving some holes there for Marcus Lattimore. When things are not open downfield, we've seen a lot of this from Connor Shaw showing some quickness and being able to pick first downs up. And they haven't thrown a lot, only nine passes in the first half. But here, a little bit of misdirection with the play action. Then he looks right, comes all the way back, and finds Bruce Ellington in the corner of the end zone for a touchdown. Steve Spurrier, really good job of mixing up the play calling in that first half. Shaw pulls it away. This is what Heather said the dogs wanted to take away, and they couldn't do it that time. He's now rushed for about 55 yards in this football game, and he has hurt the dogs with his legs. And a running quarterback does so much to a defensive coordinator as far as he can cover receivers. He can try to plan for a running back. But when things break down and Connor Shaw takes off, that's backyard football. The big fella is short. Jenkins, the nose man. Georgia's defense does their job. They've got to get out in this second half. If they want to have a chance to come back and get in this game and be competitive, they've got to fire off three and outs. They've got to get the ball back to Aaron Murray. Well, it's fourth down and two, and the punting team will come out. Tyler Ho is the punter. And Rhett McGowan goes back deep for the dog. McGowan's fair catch at the 33 yard line. So Georgia will try again when you come back. ESPN College Football Primetime, brought to you by ExxonMobil, taking on the world's toughest energy challenges. And Northwestern Mutual, proud to be the official financial planning partner of the NCAA. Everybody's favorite mascot. Okay. Taking a peek around and saying, come on, lads, what's going on here? That's enough standing. I gotta get Let me get down here. Let's get, let's get a rally here in Columbia. Play action, Murray rolling to the right. He's in trouble, and he has to dump it off. And he was in trouble because Taylor was hanging on. Well, Murray has had to go to this no huddle because Brennan in the first half, when they got under center, here he's trying to make a little check at the line of scrimmage by just moving his hands out. You see this a lot from Georgia. The left tackle, Gates, the right guard, Burnett, they flinch. Cost him five yards, so they've gone back to just trying to go no huddle, back to the line, and try to get the ball snapped as quickly as they can. Second and long again. The big fella. That'd be a fumble. Georgia jumped on it, but Clowney, and there's a penalty on the play, but Clowney was all over the quarterback. Before the snap, false start, 12 offense, five yard penalty, still second down. That was King who moved. Who would ever think that King moving takes away this move by Clowney and eventually a fumble against the Georgia offense. But Clowney, imagine being a quarterback, by the way, and you got seven from your blind side all night long. Even if he doesn't get to Murray, his presence is there. And you want, that's why Murray's missed some of these passes that he's hit all year. It's because he knows number seven's in that blind spot. Second and 15. Into tight coverage, incomplete. And it'll be third down. We check in with Heather. Guys, you were just talking about you can't imagine being Aaron Murray and seeing Clowney on the other side. Well, guys, Aaron Murray said he hasn't been able to sleep the last couple of nights, probably because he didn't want to have any nightmares about Clowney coming his way. Yeah, exactly. He is every quarterback's nightmare, and... One man can't handle him. That, that is becoming increasingly apparent in this football game. And when you focus attention on him, Devin Taylor on the other side is pretty good himself. Well, here's Gates again. He's got his back early over here to help him. And that time coming through was Sutton. Chaz Sutton, number 90. 
Brent, again, Clowney creates the attention. Watch the left guard here. Gates, he comes out to help. The problem is, to the inside, Sutton has three sacks on the year. So the left guard kicks out because he's so worried about Clowney. And you cannot do that with Chad Sutton, the junior at 6'5", 250. He's got fast twitch as well, and he goes right over top of the center, David Andrews, and gets in there. Every offensive line in the SEC, take note. This is a real powerful defensive front at South Carolina. A. Sanders going to fair catch it at the 37-yard line. I mean, this defensive line, it's as good as it gets. And there they are. Lorenzo Ward and the assistants have done a great job with this group. Well, Jimmy Johnson and Dale Earnhardt Jr. highlight a star-studded field. The chase for the sprint heads to legendary Talladega Super Speedway in Alabama. And the Sprint Cup Series at Talladega Sunday at 1 Eastern on ESPN. Kirby, number 48, is five points out of the lead, trailing Brad Keselowski. How about that, too, moving up? 48's going to have a big week, though, this week. I'm feeling it. Marcus Lattimore and Kenny Miles. So Spurrier has made a little bit of adjustment in his backfield, trying to get something going. They have bogged down offensively. Remember, they scored all 21 of their points in the opening quarter. And now they send Lattimore out into the right flat. And they're going to pitch it to him. And uh, there's a flag. It was stopped. Before the snap, false start, 82 offense, five-yard penalty. You and, I, you and I got a kick out of the end of the last series where South Carolina started the second half with a three and out. This is during the break. Steve Spurrier needs to get a good look at his play chart. So he just throws it on the grass there. <laughs> Bends so over. And I asked him if he still threw the visor as much as he did, and he said, no, because I wear that. See the headset? Yeah. I, can't, I can't get the yeah. headset off. It presses down in my ears, and I can't get the visor like I used to goes, I when I was down in Gainesville. Where are the headset? <laughs> down in Gainesville. <laughs> here's here's Lattimore. Fakes the end around, keeps it himself, and he's having trouble picking daylight. The one thing that this Georgia defense has done, they've done a pretty good job on 21 tonight. Herrera made that stop for the dogs. But there were some other things got loose on him in the opening quarter. I think Steve Spurrier, when he threw that play chart down and looked at it, I think he realizes, yeah, you're, you're up 21, but you look at the clock, you don't want to lose your aggressive nature. They've been running the ball a lot, but they've also been willing to take a few shots every once in a while off of the play action look. And I think he'll still want to do that this early in the game. Shaw back in the pocket will take off again. And he doesn't pick up a first down. He was picking up first downs back in that opening quarter, and the dogs have been able to shut that down. And I think the beautiful thing for Steve Sprayer is, even with a quarterback like Shaw, even when you do drop back to throw, you, there's a chance he's going to be able to find a way to get positive yards. And what, they, what they've done here is they've almost bracketed him when he's taking off with two linebackers. Instead of letting him get outside, they're forcing him to run into the teeth of that second level of Georgia's defense. Adam is the single running back behind Shaw. D.L. Moore is the tall wide receiver to the right. And Shaw's going to come back deep now, and he's got him open, and here comes Moore. Toward the end zone at the one-yard line. Williams saves a touchdown, 62 yards to the senior from Bowling Green, Kentucky. Sean Williams, 36, gets caught up with the tight end, Justice Cunningham, and by him being occupied there, the receiver Moore got way behind coverage. The ball is actually underthrown. He does a good job of coming back to it, but Brent, where is Sean Williams, and why is he looking at Justin Cunningham, the tight end? Now remember, nose for the end zone, Marcus Lattimore, number 21. Spurrier loves to depend on him. Here he comes. Touchdown, South Carolina. Marcus Lattimore has now scored in each of his last seven games. That's his ninth touchdown of the year. We just talked about it before they did it. 
up 21, stay aggressive. Run the ball, take some shots downfield, when you get a chance to find the matchup you like. Look at the pad level from Lattimore. It's like a human torpedo. Adam Yates makes it a 28-point margin. Let's go back to the touchdown here by South Carolina. I want you to watch the tight end Cunningham, who's just going to run a route. He's trying to get to the first down marker. The linebacker Ogletree actually drops, and he takes him away. It's third and ten. Third and ten. Interesting. He's right at the first down marker. Ogletree's there. Here's Sean Williams. He comes up because it's third and ten, and it frees it up behind him. And you find out that Steve Spurrier maintains that aggressive nature and gives his quarterback, Shaw, a chance to put the ball in the air downfield. So there's the penalty. Let's check in now with Reese in the studio. Reese. All right, Brent, time for a Dr. Pepper 10 conference update on ABC in the Big Ten, Nebraska and Ohio State. Braxton Miller's had a 72-yard run to set up a touchdown, and then he finds Jeff Hireman, takes the Buckeyes into higher ground. Ohio State now moved on top. One of the great scenes of the season is unfolding here in Columbia. Penalty puts the ball up at the 35-yard line for Aaron Murray and the Dogs. Marshall, nothing doing. Second and nine. Toss. Marshall short of the first down. But the job this South Carolina defense has done is just remarkable to consider what Georgia has done coming into tonight. Again. And they work over the freshman running back. It's going to be very close. The dogs think they've got the first down. He gave it to him. I think all of us, fans, the media, announcers, we all get caught up in the quarterbacks and the freshman running backs and all the potential of an offense. They came into this game averaging 536 yards of offense. And up to this point, they have been shut down 116 yards of offense. Murray. Incomplete. And you wonder, why is that? Because you knew it was potential to happen. And it, it's a great reminder to all of us about the importance of the battle in the trenches in any level of football. The offensive line matching up with the defensive line, and it has been complete domination by South Carolina. Marshall, nowhere. Stuffed again. There's just no threat in a passing game. There hasn't been because this defensive line is shooting gaps. By the time these guards are pulling around, there's such penetration. There's just nowhere to go. I mean, look at this. Imagine being these backs. I don't care if you're a freshman, a senior, if you're in the NFL. You're not going to be able to run into that defensive line. Need 12 on third down. Didn't get it. 
Good defense that time by Legree, who's made a couple of fine plays. Jimmy Legree is a junior from Buford, South Carolina. Ball is thrown. Where Wooten can make a play on this, and Wooten's been targeted now three or four times. Going to go on fourth, down by 28. South Carolina football. I tell you, Aaron Murray just cannot get settled. Fourth down, he knows he has to get the ball out of his hands. Clowney un unable to get to him, but he went up in the air and got in the way of Murray. Up and over again, Marshall tried to block him. Murray actually looked to his left, and imagine looking and seeing Clowney go airborne. Quickly came back to his right, unsettled, and just threw the ball up for grabs. Bringing the clock down with a 28-point lead. Lattimore breaks that first tackle to the second level in the 40-yard line. Sanders Cummings came on the blitz, the corner blitz from right here. He actually is free. If you don't hit Lattimore low, you're not going to bring him down. He just sheds the corner who is free on the blitz. No chance. Breaks free again. First down, and here's a handoff working a steady diet of Marcus Lattimore, the junior from Duncan, South Carolina, and a leading candidate for the Doak Walker Award given annually to the best running back in all of college football. I think Steve Spurrier going tempo here with his big lead. Going for the jugular here, up 28-0. If you take a look at Spurrier's career, when he was at Florida. He was very successful against Georgia. 11 and 1 successful. Shaw keeps it on the read option and Jenkins brings him down. Jordan Jenkins on the tackle. What a few mistakes Shaw's made there on the, the misread of that zone read play. Third and 11. Keeping it. And down at the 15 yard line, Rambo making the tackle for Georgia. Now it's fourth down and five, and let's see if Spurrier passes up a field goal opportunity and goes for it. No, I believe he's going to send him onto the field now. And that would be Adam Yates from Sparks, Maryland. So gathers in there on the defense, and uh, that's one of the few bright spots for uh, Georgia here tonight, Irving. Yeah, they got a, a good push in the interior there. Gathers, you can see the big fella gets his hand on it. Looked like maybe another big defensive tackle, but when you get a push by two 365-pound defensive linemen and the balls kick low, <laughs> those guys are just huge. Gathers 350, three, well, depending on the day you weigh him, but 355, 360, John Jenkins as well with a similar size. 
And Steve Spurrier was coaching away with his quarterback. Gurley back in as the running back for the Dogs. Fine run for eight yards. That is a rare thing, is a Georgia offensive lineman getting around the edge and leading a back without South Carolina getting penetration. Literally think it may be the first time we've seen that tonight. And Clowney was in hot pursuit <laughs> and made the stop. Second and three. First down. Murray telling us this week, he said, you know, in high school, I was used to relying on my feet to make a lot of plays. I was typically the best athlete on the field, and I, I was kind of a dual guy. And you come into the SEC, and you learn right away that I got to learn how to do some other things besides running around with the football. And I think that's where he's changed the most. That time he had to rely on his old ways. Gurley, and he's cut off. They stretch it. Jeffrey is there defensively. Penalty flag has been thrown back by the 29 yard line. I think you can see that the uh, the referees are all wearing microphones. You see that with the umpire mm -hmm. and the referee. Now you see the back judge. Personal foul. There's the side Face judge. Mask. 71 offense. 15 yard penalty in the previous spot. Repeat first down. It's a story, so let's go to Heather. Well, guys, you notice how much more quickly they're making the calls. I talked to the officials before the game, and it says those wireless mics allow them to enforce penalties faster. They talk pre-snap during the play. They give each other heads-ups. They say it actually speeds up the game. It turns a 45-second call into a 20-second scenario. They said they're used to the equipment. The biggest change right now is losing game atmospheres, not hearing the players talking and not hearing the crowd noise because they're wearing earpieces. So that's experimental here with this game tonight, isn't it, Herbert? With what they're doing. Yeah, yeah, you don't see, you don't see that. Maybe that's uh, the future. Maybe. Depending on how it goes. Malcolm Mitchell snaps off that pass. Second down at the 30. Georgia's got to just keep fighting. It's been a long night. In South Carolina's crowd and defense. They don't, they're not going to let up. Does just get it off, but it was incomplete. Intended for Jay Rome was a safety valve, but he was under pressure from Surratt. What's happening on the outside is South Carolina is jamming the Georgia wide receivers. They're making them work to get open. And when you have a defensive line and a pass rush like South Carolina, and these receivers all night have been facing jam and press coverage, and they're fighting to be able to get to their spots. By the time they get to their spots, Aaron Murray is either sacked or he's just throwing the ball to get away from the pressure. Third and 12. Deep middle and almost intercepted. Almost picked off by Bryson Williams. Like many of these Gamecock players, he was recruited out of Georgia. Steve Spurrier telling us, Irby, that uh, there are as many Division I football players in Georgia as there are in Florida these days. Yeah, he was talking about just in the Atlanta metro area alone, how many Division I SEC quality players are in that area, and everybody from all over the country comes in there to try to get the talent. Barber punting again for the Dogs, and Ace Sanders is back deep. Ace is going to try it for the 20. Going to cut back. Going to swing left if he can get there. Does. Breaks the open field. Coming down the sideline. And he was out of bounds. And a couple of flags have been thrown. Whoa, you might be right. He might be the most dangerous in the country now. I think he's become that. I think after the Missouri return, a lot of people saw that. And 
Now that was a top 10 kind of play tonight. The big return this one. I mean, he, he you get him in space and he is a handful for anybody to bring down. So it will be South Carolina football. It's just a question as to where they're going to spot it now. Referee is Austin. You know, looking at Spurrier over there, Herbie, South Carolina is 23 and 3 in their last 26 home games here at Williams Bryce Stadium. I mean, they have a remarkable home record going now. And part of the reason is this fantastic crowd that showed up early. We've never seen a traffic jam or tailgating like we saw coming to this stadium today. I, I this morning for college game day, we had people camping out last night, literally in tents. Right. There's two fouls uh, on the play. It was one of the best shows we've Illegal ever had as far the as back, the energy. The it's carried over 18. into this game that tonight. Decline. Holding on the receiving team number 10. That foul will be enforced 10 yards from the end of the kick. First down. But I, I agree. I, you know, you always go into the SEC and you think, boy, they love their football. What a great scene it's going to be. And then you get there and you, we all talk about, boy, it was great. But South Carolina, you got to remember this team for the first time in school history won 11 games last year under Steve Spurrier. The year before that, they were in Atlanta. They played Auburn in the SEC championship game. They're not used to that. And now this year, they're ranked at number six. They're playing number five, and they're up by 28. This is pinch me. I, I can't believe this is happening if you're a South Carolina Gamecock fan. Kind of the golden age of South no Carolina doubt. football. And no you know, doubt. sports in general, uh, think of the baseball team, the back-to-back -back championships, as uh, Connor Shaw takes over here for the Gamecocks. The ball is spotted back at the 11-yard line. Kenny Miles checks in uh, to the game right now. He's number 31. He's a senior from Lawrenceville, Georgia. And so, uh, right will be giving a break here. It's the final seconds of the third quarter. And I want to remind everybody that, you know, we've been talking about the running backs here. There's some pretty good ones, Herbie, coming up right after us. Uh, Washington, Oregon. I mean, uh, the Ducks have got some pretty flashy backs. They do. And Washington coming off the big emotional win at home. Now they got to go to Austin Stadium. It's always a tough environment. It's a rivalry game. If you didn't know that, these two teams don't like one another. It'll be tough, in my opinion, for Washington to hold on for four quarters against those numbers from the Oregon offense. So the third quarter comes to an end. Four fingers aloft. One more quarter. 24 hours to celebrate. And then, Cocky, you can start thinking about that trip to Baton Rouge. Aerial coverage being provided by the MetLife Blimp. See how MetLife can provide the coverage you need. MetLife, I can do this. And it is a beautiful scene here in Columbia, South Carolina, with the Gamecocks up by four touchdowns. Herbie? Oh, while we were away, Mark Rick called his team over heading into this fourth quarter just to talk to him. And, I, and what I think he's talking to him about is, guys, we got one quarter left. We got one quarter to try to establish ourselves, not just for this quarter, but for the rest of the year. We've been embarrassed for three quarters. You better show some fight here. Look at their numbers since 2008 against teams that had finished the season ranked two and 14. The last two years, 0 and nine. Now they're down 28 to nothing as we start the fourth against the number six team in the country. Second down and eight as we start the Quarter. Connor Shaw will hand off to Kenny Miles on the first play. And this crowd, as we look around this stadium, what we expected a record, and we got it 85,199. The state capital of South Carolina. And oh, how they love what Steve Spurrier has done to this football team. You think back now. Hasn't lost lately to Tennessee. Hasn't lost to Clemson lately. Hasn't lost to Georgia. I mean, the Gamecocks are taking care of business. Third down and four. Shaw on a running play, and he 
short, and he took a pretty good looking down there, Herbie. And uh, one of them was that uh, great linebacker Jones, number 29, was jumping in there too. He's had a relatively quiet night, but you could see a couple of different Georgia defenders. Jordan Jenkins, the true freshman, involved there too. It's good to see Connor Shaw up from that hit. Connor Shaw, you know, he's he's one of those game college quarterbacks. The I kids love that it. we see around yeah. the country, yep. they, they just get it done. They know what they're doing. Mentioned he played for his dad in high school, right. and he just has the intangibles. They're a little bit short there, but the intangibles, it's just he's so different from what you envision when you think of Steve Spurrier and his offense and his quarterbacks over the years. I mean, when you think about Steve Spurrier, you think about a guy that's going to get back there and fire it all over the, the field. Fun and gun. Right. And it's much different here with this it's team. It's funny, in this era of just teams throwing it all the time, you come back to the, the pioneer, and he's running the football and taking some shots once in a while downfield, and he's got a dual-threat quarterback in Connor Shaw. Sign of a good leader. He adjusts to his personnel. And of course, he's got that great running back. And look at him stuff that front against the quarterback right now. And there was movement. They got it. They picked it up. Use the hard count, yeah, eh? Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you're Georgia, it's fourth and one. They're up 28 to nothing. And I know Steve Spurrier, hey, he's a risk taker. But why are you even thinking of moving? Because he's probably not going to go. Well, I mean, he's just going to sit yeah, there. Yeah, he's going to give you the hard count. Why would you fall for that? Offside, defense number nine, and the neutral zone following the offense for a five-yard penalty results in the first half. That's just a lack of discipline right there. And I understand that's Jarvis Jones. I understand you want to try to get out, get off the ball, but play worked to perfection just the way he drew that one up. And the thing is, he'll take as much pride in that play right there as any touchdown the whole night. He'll want to talk about that one with the media boys after the game. It's a pleasure he's working with his son, Steve Spurrier Jr., who's on the coaching staff. Of course, we saw Steve Jr. when he was working with the Scoops out in Oklahoma. Head coach Bob Scoops out there. He's back with his pops here. Miles pounding ahead now. And let's us check in with Reese Davis. Reese? All right, Brett. Buckeyes and the Cornhuskers. This thing has been back and forth. Nebraska up 24-21. Now, they're in the first half. Carlos Hyde scores to surge the Buckeyes back on top. It's now 28-24. 90 seconds to play in the first half on ABC. As soon as we're done, we'll take it on some stadium. Marcus Mariota taking on Washington. Kickoff in less than 48 minutes. Yeah, that'll be electric out there at Autzen. I'll tell you, that's one of the better venues in college football that's next Marcus Lattimore checks back into the game and look at him battle for that first down first man can't bring him down you know, last week against Kentucky they were down and he came fighting back and I think builds some momentum coming in to tonight he looks healthy I know he hasn't had a huge night but he's done enough and he's had a presence where he's been able to pick up some yards and if you hit him high you can see the leg strength coming back he told us you know I'm still working with my knee I'm still I'm lifting heavy on Monday and Wednesday trying to regain that strength that I had be prior to the surgery last October He's close. He's getting there. Yeah, like all those fellows who come off knee surgery, he had to work so very hard. It's funny, when he, when he suffered the injury, he was not even the ball carrier when he was cut down. And uh, it looks like Jenkins in the middle of that defensive front moved again and uh, bowled the center over there. Did Mark Rick... Offside, defense number six, five-yard penalty. Did Mark Rick just... Get his team over on the sideline before this quarter started and talk to him. That happened, right? Yeah, it did. Okay. He, he talked to them about finishing and playing with some heart in the fourth quarter. If Georgia's not careful, this loss and the way they're losing this game and the way they're not playing with much discipline here could impact them down the road against other opponents in the SEC. This is one loss that potentially could lead, lead to two or three. First and five now after that penalty. They'll come with the runner again. Lattimore breaks the daylight. 
crosses midfield to the 46-yard line. And so when you look back at Marcus Lattimore, Mississippi State, now watch on the outside, number 21. Watch that left leg. Cut down, out for the season, ACL. Then's when you got to go to work in the offseason. The hour after hour of hard work and the drills out in the field just to get ready. And that now you're back. Great shot in that empty stadium. Visualizing a night like this when it's 100 degrees out and nobody's there. What are you doing to get back to get to 100%? That was a beautiful shot. And over here tonight, he's got 108 yards. Okay. He's rushed for 108. Miles is now in, has replaced him. Over on the sideline is the great running back. He's had 11 100 yard games here. And there's the first two that you talked about. Yeah. I mean, to think about what he's been able to do. And he, we talked to him uh, Friday after their practice. And boy, what a, what a nice guy. Just a, a guy who is selfless. He's all about his line, he's about his teammates. And he said, you know, Georgia has one of these defenses where they play the 3-4. There's some bubbles up there. And I don't know. I just kind of find some creases and have had some success. Not a burner, Coach Furrier says, but he picks up valuable yards, tough yards. Here's Shaw now. He makes a cut, stays on his feet. Beautiful run for the first down. What a dandy little run by the quarterback. And the flag comes flying as he goes down out of bounds. Let's see if Rambo or somebody was guilty over there. Uh, I think it was Herrera. Following the play, Rambo personal in. foul. Unnecessary roughness from our 18 defense. Mm -hmm. yard penalty. Yeah, it was Rambo. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> I just, if I were a Georgia fan, no question. I would be beyond frustrated with this team's performance tonight. And I'm not just talking about 28 to nothing. They're the most penalized team in the SEC. And now on a drive where you're down by 28, supposed to so, show some spunk, some fight. Three silly penalties. Absolutely. And as a result, Harvey, the, the Gamecocks are in the red zone again. comes the overrated champ. You've got individual superstars. There's Jarvis Jones, one of those. You've got Jarvis Jones, Alec Ogletree, Sean Williams, Bakari Rambo, John Jenkins, Kwame Gathers, Avery Jones. And Georgia has as many individual superstars on defense as you're going to see in the SEC. Now it checks over to the sideline. Not ticking away now. Intent to bring off some seconds. Plowing straight ahead. An idea of some of the players and some of the evaluations that they're already receiving from. Todd McShay and scouts think you can see a lot of people with what they believe about some of these players. And, you know, Georgia can rebound from this, but I, I, I guess the most discouraging thing is just a, a lack of discipline and a lack of, of a willingness to fight here towards the end of the game. Bringing it down and a snap on five or less. Miles. Short of the 15 yard line. I think you, we're talking a lot about Georgia here, but you got to give South Carolina for the way they've gone about their business. Probably has led to a lot of this, some of the frustrating signs that we have seen from Georgia. They have run the football 44 times. Connor Shaw is 6 of 10. timeouts he brings it down run a few more seconds off the clock and then burn the timeout 
So we'll take a break. South Carolina climbing all over number five, Georgia. Only unsuccessful stop. Came here to South Carolina, and what a rebuilding job he has done here. And now undefeated, and he'll be in the top five next week. And he'll head on down to Baton Rouge as Steve and South Carolina lead Georgia 28-0 as we continue Dr. Pepper's road to the championships. Seeing all those photos just brings back so many memories of him. He's, his personality is so much fun and so good for college football. Absolutely. Miles gonna burn time now. Jenkins finally makes the stop, but it's another first down for this grinding machine. We haven't talked a lot, Herbie, about the offensive line of the Gamecocks. They deserve some credit. They've done a really good job. Johnson is the centerpiece up here. Patrick and Can are the starting guards that you see. Brandon Shell, who's Art Shell's nephew, has played right tackle. And big Corey Robinson, we do mean big, 6'8", 337, has been over there at left tackle and this bunch has done a fine job I can't remember a false start did I miss one I, I don't think there has been one Brent. And then Miles but right straight ahead I'm glad you brought him up because last week again I, I still feel like they're developing the continuity with three new starters up there and last week they're down against Kentucky second half they just said you know what we're gonna run the power play we're gonna run the football and I think when South Carolina looks back at their year the second half in Lexington, I think, is where the offensive line and where Marcus Lattimore developed some confidence and continuity coming into this game and on down the line. They really did a good job in the second half of the game when you and I sure were did. looking at the tape of it. Sure did. But you're right. It was, it was very basic. They knew. Kentucky knew it was Here coming. Here we come. Yeah. And uh, Georgia knows they're coming. And Miles giving about a yard or so. Jenkins. Big Jenkins still trying to stand tall down there, the 350 pounder from Connecticut. And I think what's interesting about the offensive philosophy that, that South Carolina has is they're, they're going to rely on running the football. That, that, that's who they are. But they've got enough wrinkles within the Steve Spurrier package to make you have to really think about do we overcommit to Connor Shaw and the Marcus Lattimore in this running game? Because Georgia did that early and they found themselves down. They gave up two quick touchdowns on the first two drives. So he does enough to make you have to respect that part of it. And then they get back to their bread and butter. Third down and goal now and Shaw, but it was uh, stopped prior to the snap. Well, Georgia had 10 players on the field. So Mark Richt was halfway out in the field trying prior to get to a snap, timeout. Timeout, Georgia. First time out of the half. They're having a hard enough to stop time stopping them. They don't want to try with 10. So we'll take a break here. Stop. ESPN College Football Primetime is presented by Hampton Hotels. Feel the Hamptonality. And in part by Buick. Experience your kind of convenience, peace of mind, entertainment, and luxury. So the state capital of South Carolina is a statue. The first president of the United States out front. Sherman did bomb that building when it was being built. It was not completely constructed, and now it has been completed, and it's a beautiful building here in Columbia. And we welcome you back now to ESPN College Football Primetime, presented by Hampton Hotel. It's the last 624, and the Gamecocks have really done a job on the clock. Walked in. Connor Shaw touchdown. And that, folks, is Sean Elliott. He has done a terrific job with this offensive line and the run game, the co-offensive coordinator. He's from Appalachian State. Some of you might remember one of the biggest upsets in recent memory, Appalachian State beating Michigan in the big house. He was one of the coaches at Appalachian State that day, and he's done a fabulous job with this offense. They ran the read option at Appalachian State, and he brought it in here, and <laughs> Spurrier says he's done a heck of a job with it. And he loves the reason he's so excited is that's exactly what they ran right there to perfection. They haven't run it a lot tonight, but they ran it here. And the All American Jarvis Jones came down on the running back right there. An easy read for Connor Shaw, making the coach happy on the sideline, and takes it into the end zone. 
Boom, baby. <laughs> A look at our record crowd here in Columbia and this aerial coverage provided by the MetLife blimp. See how MetLife can provide the coverage you need. MetLife, I can do this. And you are watching an SEC blowout on ESPN. South Carolina has jumped all over Georgia. It is 35 nothing, and this city continues to rock. Let's check in with Reese Davis for an update. All right, Brent, back and forth game in Austin. Texas up 38-34. West Virginia converted a couple of fourth downs on this drive, and Geno Smith hits Devin Bailey. 41-38, the Mountaineers' defense just got a big stop on fourth down. First half, Nebraska and Ohio State, fourth and one. Braxton Miller is going off. 35 points at the half against the Huskers. 35-24 is the score. All right, Reese, and I, I want to ask Brent, I'm just thinking here, it's 35 to nothing, number five against number six, outside of the national championship last year. Can you think of another big game like this where it was just so flat, where it just a team had this big a disappointment in a big game? I mean, we, we expected so much of them. They yeah. were the fifth-ranked team in the country. They had played a couple of really tough games against South Carolina over the last two. Right. The one in Athens was a classic before they lost it. You fully expected Murray and the Dogs to play their hearts out in this game. And I have been so disappointed in what I've seen here tonight. I do want to say I really think South Carolina has played a magnificent football game. I don't want to take anything no. away from them. But I can't believe that somebody in the SEC would come in as flat as they are here tonight. And, and I think, and you're right, let's first of all give all the credit to Steve Spurrier Absolutely. in South Carolina and this fan base and the way they took over the game from the beginning. But to see not just Georgia lose the game, but the way they've gone about their business tonight, shocking. I mean, I, I, other than the LSU game in the national championship, I cannot remember leaving a stadium more disappointed than tonight and what Georgia did. Yeah, exactly. So we're going to take a break. We'll come back and wrap it up. A huge night for the Gamecocks. Celebrating its eighth year, sponsoring the Good Hands Field Goal Nets, Allstate makes contributions to participating University General Scholarship Funds for each field goal and extra point kick. To date, Allstate has contributed more than $2.8 million in the scholarship money. First down and 10. Aaron Murray still in at quarterback. And hands off to Marshall. Surratt makes the stop for South Carolina. This offense came in as a juggernaut. 200, close to 250 yards a game on the ground tonight, 60. 287 through the air tonight, 109. 169 total yards tonight. Marshall trying to get the left edge. And he's forced out of bounds right around midfield. Bowens pushing him out of bounds for the Gamecocks. And the most Final five minutes, Irving. Sorry, bud. No. The most important, the 48 points a game tonight being shut out. And it has everything to do with what's happened up front with Jadavian Clowney and Kelsey Quarles and Devin Taylor, an entire defensive line across the board, and the depth that they rotate in, dominating Georgia in the trenches. Ken Malcolm. Now the running back breaks through a hole. Nice nine-yard run for the redshirt sophomore from Decatur, Georgia. And I want to remind everybody that the BCS countdown is on ESPN and ESPNU Sunday. So the analysts will break it all down, and it is a week before the first rankings come out. 8.30 p.m. on ESPN. Then at 9, it'll go over to the U. So the BCS countdown begins tomorrow. And we will see who's going to be in hot pursuit of Alabama. Play action. Murray deflected incomplete. And 
The Associated Press top 10 here as we take a look at this, Herbie, with the Alabama sitting at home and uh, enjoying their week off, and Oregon coming up next here on ESPN. You look down, you come down the line there, you look at Kansas State continues to be impressive. I know it was Kansas, just the way they played. West Virginia going down the wire here against Texas. Notre Dame up 27 to 3, and look at number 10. Who would have thought at the end of August that the Florida Gators, after the way they played against Bowling Green, sitting there at 5 and 0. Hand off to the fullback, and Hall picks up the first down. What's interesting is that LSU and Georgia are going to drop dramatically yeah. in the rankings. And uh, so there will be a juggle in the top five. Certainly, uh, South Carolina figures to be oh, yeah. in yeah. the top five. And you have to wonder if uh, West Virginia hangs on and outduels Texas, if they will jump into one of those coveted spots. But we shall see when all the rankings come out. But what a performance here tonight by South Carolina and the old ball coach. Malcolm. Malcolm running pretty hard here for the dogs and a mop up against some of the second teamers of South Carolina. The great thing, as you know about this sport, is maintaining consistency. It's one thing to come into this environment, five against six. Here we go. Everybody's fired up. Twelfth man's in effect. Now you got to go on the road to Baton Rouge. Can you play like this on the road when the crowd's not in your corner? Can they maintain it is the question for next week. Yeah, that is such a great point because certainly uh, LSU will be uh, paying attention to South Carolina coming in. You know, off a, yeah. off a tough loss down in Florida. I think I saw a couple of players get injured again, and LSU's had, had some problems with injuries, so we certainly hope everybody's healthy for next week for them. We shall see. Marshall checks in. First down and 10. South Carolina bringing a little pressure. Deflected and almost intercepted by one of the linemen. That was Gerald Dixon Jr. who almost had a pick. So there's the uh, comparison between Gershel and Lattimore. And I would say advantage veteran. <laughs> yeah. And I think he came in highly motivated. To have a big night. It gets over 100 yards. Kind of workman like for him based on the, the last two games that he's had against his Georgia defense. Malcolm, the ball carrier. Breaks free. One more to break. Short of the end zone. Good strong run down to the three yard line. And Brian Williams finally bringing it down. So the uh, dogs trying to save a little face here by preventing a shutout. A 20 yard run and uh, Malcolm certainly deserves a chance to get the touchdown. Uh, 225 pounds. He's running through these arm tackles from South Carolina's defense. And we talked about how the defense from Georgia didn't necessarily listen to Mark Rick to show some fight. Well, this Georgia offense got the memo. At least they're going down swinging here in the final few minutes of the game. Here comes Malcolm. Battling toward the end zone and on into it, and there's the touchdown signal. So Georgia scores with a couple of minutes remaining here in South Carolina to uh, avoid the shutout here tonight. You know, it's interesting in, in checking the South Carolina defense in the red zone this year. They'd allowed only three touchdowns in 12 trips in. I mean, this defense of South Carolina's didn't just grow up tonight. I mean, they came in pretty no. stout. No, they did. And they're experienced in the right areas, and they have tremendous depth up front, allowing them to stay fresh up front, which is going to give them a big advantage against any offensive line yeah. they play. And a reminder, of course, that at 10 Eastern on ESPN, Sunday, NFL Countdown. Chris and the gang will tell you all about what's going on around the National Football League. That will start at Sunday at 10 a.m. And a couple of things are... Uh, are interesting and there you see your fantasy football now will we'll follow the uh, the countdown tomorrow so you can find out which running backs and wide receivers you should be starting tomorrow so we've got a break here but Kirby this is the uh, tenth straight victory okay for South Carolina and I believe that's the longest win streak ever for this school okay 
This is their 10th consecutive win going back to last season under uh, under Spurrier and in the SEC East now keep in mind that Spurrier ran the table last year. He had gone to the championship game except he lost to the Western teams. Okay. Right, right. They didn't do that. So yeah. he's beaten up on everybody over here in the SEC East. This sure is some is. run that they've got going. It, it really is. And you think about what they've been able to do in the last couple of years. It's remarkable to think about this. We talked about that earlier. This is a big win. But think about next week and the week after when they have a chance to just continue to play the big boys. We'll see what they can do against Florida. Starts with LSU, of course, next week. And, of course, as we opened the proceedings tonight, we pointed out that South Carolina had never beaten Georgia three straight years. And Steve Spurrier and the Gamecocks did that here tonight with a very convincing win. It's uncharted waters for these guys. That's why I go back to this is a big night for South Carolina, but how do you handle all the recognition? This starting tonight, they turn on and watch Reese and Mark and Lou, and all the way through the week, they're going to get a lot of attaboys. They are going to get more than they probably ever received. They have to block that out. You don't even want to turn the TV on and listen to the radio or read the paper. Focus on what they got to do because they got to keep their edge to them as they get ready for these next two games. And Dylan Thompson now comes into the game. He's the backup quarterback for Connor Shaw. I want to point out that Connor Shaw, as a starter, is now 13 and 1. That's right. Number 14 is 13 and 1 since taking over the job here last year. That's pretty impressive. And I think not having Steven Garcia there and the whole like there's no there's no battle there, there's there's absolutely nothing for him to worry about if he makes a mistake I think it's allowed him to relax and just play the game when we go back to the uh, the youngster who is from Georgia out of flowery branch Georgia and Connor tonight rushed for the 78 yards so well over 200 yards on the night and in, in total offense for the young man and, they jumped out to a 21 nothing lead and the defense did the rest. Added a couple of touchdowns here in the second half. He scrambled in for one on the run. So uh, Steve Spurrier has his leader. He does. He reminds me a little bit of Colin Klein as far as you're not going to necessarily see Agreed. The, the crazy numbers, but he's going to win games. Colin Klein is a fine quarterback for Coach Bill Snyder in Kansas State. This is a chance for some of you Gamecock fans to see uh, Mike Davis. Very highly recruited freshman he carried a couple of times and that'll do it. There's, there's the old ball coach. He's had a lot of battles with Mark Rick through the years when Mark was the offensive coordinator at Florida State. Steve was the head coach for the Gators. And now he has beaten him three consecutive times as head coach here at South Carolina. And that is a first for the Gamecocks. Let's go down now to Heather Cox. Brent, thanks so much, Coach. Congratulations. This was a highly anticipated matchup. It's the first time South Carolina has won a top 10 showdown. What does that say about where this program is? Well, we got a pretty good team. I just want to show. And our guys really played well. You know, we scored early, and our defense was sensational. Connor Shaw, he's, he's the kind of quarterback you love to have. When it breaks down, he'll run for 8, 10 yards. And Lattimore had a beautiful night again. And by our defense was sensational. It was indeed. In fact, this is the first time that you've beaten Georgia three times in a row, each time behind great defensive efforts. How did you corral them? How what? How did you corral them defensively? Oh, oh no. Coach Ward and those guys, they do all the they do all the defensive stuff. But we had to stop the run. And uh, then we, we can rush the passer. So we we've, we've got a good defense. we you know, if we can throw the ball a little bit better here and there. You know, we might have a really good team. I don't know yet. Wait <laughs> so, so far, so good. Coach, you're an, a night of first. You're 6-0 for the first time since 1988. How do you keep that streak alive on the road against LSU? We've won 10 in a row, first time in school history. Yep, Beat the dogs three in a row, first time in school history. So we got a lot of firsts tonight, and uh, we'll try to get another one next week. See if you can keep rolling against LSU. Thanks, Coach. <laughs> the old ball coach does it again. Herbie, a quick final thought. Well, it'll be a big showdown next week with uh, this South Carolina team on the road in Baton Rouge.
Well, thanks for watching ESPN, home of the Discover BCS National Championship game here tonight. In the state capital of South Carolina, the Gamecocks dominate Georgia. 35 to 7 is your final score. LSU is up next for the Gamecocks. Now let's go back to the studio.